Hello, Mark here coming to you from my home and I'm going to start off by talking about that actually because you may well have noticed a slight change in the style of our videos as of late, both Heather and myself filming from our home and that is likely going to continue for the foreseeable future. Obviously we have discussed the current situation on the show and in a couple other videos but I just thought I would say today obviously some areas are hit harder than others out there particularly Italy so I would really like to just say our thoughts really do go out to you. Obviously everywhere in the world is being affected by this. Here in the UK we're in self-isolation, social distancing. We are allowed to go outside once a day for some form of exercise. Most people are going for a walk or a run. I'm going often for a run each day or walking my dog. But other than that, we've pretty much got to stay inside. We're not allowed to go out and meet others. Um, so yeah, everyone's just trying to be as safe and responsible as possible. And that goes into our work as well. Now, we are not stopping. We will keep going and we are going to keep providing videos for you. Obviously, we do have a load of videos in the bank, so you may well see some videos coming out that we shot weeks, maybe even months ago. Um, so don't be surprised if you see us out cycling on the roads. Um, they will have been shot um, way ago, but we also are going to be filming going forwards. Um, Heather will be filming her own content, my, myself too. Some of you have been asking about Fraser and yet yeah, we all miss Fraser here. He is still around though, don't worry, he hasn't left us. Um, he's just taking a little bit of time out and will be back with us very soon. Um, but now, obviously, in light of the current situation, a lot of us have gone to indoor training. Obviously, that's all we can do. And um, so some of you have been sending in messages and asking about indoor training setups. And I thought today, I'd actually show you my own personal indoor training setup. It may give you some inspiration, some ideas. I'm gonna suspect not though, because I think you're gonna be slightly underwhelmed by my indoor training setup. It's not anywhere near as glamorous as you might expect. But I've got something pretty special today. I have just received this. It's coming from Elite. I'm going to be unboxing it today and I'm going to be showing you the rest of my indoor training setup. All right, doesn't take a genius to guess. Yes, this is my kitchen. And yeah, you probably noticed that's my bike. Yeah, that is my bike in the kitchen. That's my current indoor training setup. Told you it wasn't as glamorous as you expected. Um, but yeah, I mean, me and my partner, we bought this house about a year, year and a half ago. And we bought it, well, it's a lovely cottage, which we really like, but a lot because of the location. We're really outdoors. We love to be able to do stuff from our doorstep. And we've got a dog. We like to go off into the fields with him. And we can do that right from our doorstep right here. Um, so we love that. It's quite a small cottage. We're renovating it at the moment. So I do apologize if we go around the rest and look at the rest of my indoor training setup. It's a bit of a mess, um, which we love, but not so great for now when we are stuck indoors, as you can see. But I'm super excited to be able to upgrade this today. And I was actually gonna show you around the rest of the house first, but I've been looking through the packing notes, um, which have come from Elite. And okay, I can't speak Italian, but we have got what I can see, a turbo trainer, a travel block, a steering travel block, um, bottles, a mat, a couple of things. I just can't figure out what they are. I just want to get this upgraded. It looks amazing. Let's do that first and then I'll show you the rest. Promise. All right, let's pause here for a second, take a look at what we've got here. We've got the Elite Suito, I think that's how you say it. Um, super compact design, I'm pretty impressed with that. Um, it's come installed with an 11 speaker set already, I think that's 11.28, yep. Um, oh, wow, so we've got a few stats here. Um, goes up to 1900 watts. I think that might be a limiting factor. Um, but yeah, um, it's come with a bunch of stuff here. Um, adapters, I guess, for true axle or um, standard quick release. Um, who needs instructions, eh? All right, let's get it set up. All right. 
right, there we go, all set up, running nice and smoothly. I've actually got my Canyon Air Road on here at the moment. Um, so just enjoying a slightly more relaxed position given that riding indoors a bit more at the moment, which on that note, you may be interested to hear that I actually used to hate indoor training. I would avoid it at all costs. I'd ride outside, whatever the weather. Um, but over the years, I've, I guess I've come around to it. I've, quite a few people have been trying to persuade me along the way. And yeah, towards the end of my career or pro career, I was doing a lot more indoors. Um, I found it's a lot more time efficient. You'd be more specific in your sessions and really get a lot of quality from them. Um, not to say that the outdoor riding isn't great, it really is and it's really important, but you can find when you're trying to do those hard sessions, it can be quite annoying if you're getting stopped at junctions, traffic lights, or the road surface is terrible, or or even actually sometimes just the rolling terrain, as great as it can be, it means that you're fluctuating in your power. And when you're trying to do a quality workout and stick on a certain power, that can be quite frustrating. On the indoor trainer, you haven't got any of that. You can just crack on. Um, even with some smart trainers and Zwift, you can go into what's called erg mode, and it'll just lock you into a set power. So there's no escaping, you are bang on the money. Uh, which on that note, I am about to link this up to Zwift. Uh, I believe it's Bluetooth, so um, it should be nice, quick and simple. Now, as I mentioned before, I am <laughs> I'm in my kitchen. Um, therefore, I can't leave this up all the time. Although my partner is brilliant and she probably would allow me to. It's more me, actually. I would hate having it up all the time. So I, um, I do pack this down after most rides. In fact, every ride, um, I just pack it down and get out for the next one. I know that's probably quite frustrating. A lot of people couldn't deal with that, but that's the way I like it and that's how it is. Um, and on that note, I thought I'd now show you where I do store the rest of my bikes. Again, warning, it's not as nice as you might expect. Dun, dun, dun. Yep, that is it. Yeah, this is where I store my bikes. Um, I was still working on it. We kind of sorted out quickly when we first moved into this house and I haven't done any more to it. Um, I've got some plans, um, but this is it for now. I have actually got a garage external to the house um, which we store things like surfboards, sup boards, loads of outdoorsy kind of gear in there. Um, obviously not for now. Um, but here I have room for five bikes. I've got my BMC four stroke mountain bike over there. I love that bike. I've got my Felt TT, uh, which, well, I love the paintwork on this one. It's really cool. Uh, my partner's bike, which is a cyclocross or touring bike. We actually did Lands and John and Groach. She did that on, they actually bought it for it. Um, and then we've got this old school vintage uh, bike here, which is my neighbor's bike actually. He's dropped it around because I said I'd fix it up for him, put some new cables in it and some new brakes and whatnot. And then space for my Canyon Air Road. And then obviously we've got all sorts of bits of tools and equipment. I've got a strimmer actually down there and some beer. Um, we've got helmets, um, bike shoes, um, I've got on running shoes down here. Uh, it's a bit of a mess, got a load of woods here because we are obviously renovating the house and various bits and bobs. Uh, but just down here, we've got another bit of indoor training equipment. This is an indoor pull-up bar. Yep, yeah, I would attach this up here onto the door frame. This always scares me. It feels like I'm gonna break the door frame, but done it countless times. Normally whack out a couple hundred Ds each day. Um, so I know it works, um, but yeah. And also I'm limited in height here. So I basically have to bend my knees and even then I'm almost hitting my knees on the ground city house. Anyway, there we go. Um, and yeah, I, I really like the pull-up actually. It's been a staple exercise I've done for years. I've always found it really good for swimming. It's sort of, it's like functional strength. I know it's a bit of a fashionable term these days, but it genuinely really helps swimming, activating everything, getting everything working. Because swimming is such a whole body movement and you need to be able to activate not only the arms, but then into the lats, the back, and the pull-up is fantastic for that. It's, there is no escaping with the pull-up. But now, let's head upstairs, take a look at some of the rest of my indoor training setup. I'm actually quite out of breath from two pull-ups. All right, so up here, this is our living room, and also Reggie's home. Reggie, what are you doing? This is where he hangs out most of the day. Hey boys. All right, let's get everything out of the way. Articulate, um, Monopoly, all the important things. 
And uh, now before I actually open stuff and get stuck into this chest, um, let me actually explain why everything's hidden away. Because you might have sensed this already, I want to pack my bike away, um, it's all stored away in a little room. Um, if you actually were to come into my house, um, you probably would have no idea that a triathlete lives here. And there's a good reason for that because, well, I've been involved in sport basically my whole life. I'm extremely passionate about it. Um, I've been involved in elite sport, in swimming since the age of 11 or 12. And for me, I need to switch off when I get home. Um, this is just a personal thing and I do um, totally respect some people who just love to have everything up and about, absolutely fine. Um, personally though, uh, this is how I deal with it. I pop everything away. It's the same reason why when I went to university, I did industrial design um, rather than sports science like a lot of my friends did because I'm doing a lot of sport and I actually just wanted to pursue another hobby, something I was passionate about that took my mind off of things and gave me a little bit of a break from it. Um, so anyway, that's why um, I do that and that's why everything's in a chest hidden away and you wouldn't know that it's here. Um, so anyway, let's have a little look. All right, so it's a bit of a mess. We've got some rugs and all sorts in here. I'll pop you back down so I can run you through this. So here we have a foam roller. Um, this is one of the go-tos. I use this a lot. Um, now, I know massage is kind of personal. Not everyone believes in it or agrees with it. Um, I swear by it. If I didn't have massages regularly, which I did do a lot when I was racing professionally, I'd be a very broken man. So I use that a lot. I've um, got some other massaging bits here. So I've got um, this is on two kind of roller skate wheels. I actually sort of forgot I had this, um, but it's got a soft patch in the middle um, that's really good for the bottom of your calf into the soleus and the Achilles area um, and the hamstring actually. Um, I might start using that again actually, it's really good. Um, what else we got here? Ah, this one, I use this one a lot. Uh, two tennis balls, a um, bit of physio tape holding it together. Really good, um, again, for your calf, your hamstring, but particularly I use this on my back, actually. I'm sure some people out there would advise otherwise, um, but it's really good for getting on either side of the spine um, and being nice and soft. I've uh, got a cricket ball, just for getting those real big knots, so the glutes and stuff like that. I've uh, got a bunch of these silly physio spiky balls, never use them. Don't know why I've got them. Um, what else we've got? We've got um, this roller, um, good core exercise. Uh, I used to do this quite a lot, not that you'd know, um, but yeah, nice, simple, easy, cheap device. I recommend this. Um, we've got a bunch of dumbbells, casual 40 kilos each, nothing too crazy. Um, We've got a couple of skipping ropes here. Um, we used to do a lot of skipping actually as a swimmer. Uh, we used to do a sort of land training to warm up before swimming. Um, don't do enough of it anymore, but I actually think it's really good for running. Um, it's good for your ankle stiffness, um, the reaction and ground contact time. Um, I should do more skipping. Actually, maybe I'll do a video on skipping. That's good. Um, I've got a couple of these. I don't know why I've got these. So I've had these since when I was a swimmer. Um, yeah, anyway, no comments, um, but yeah. Anyway. We've got a um, bunch of physio bands. To be honest, I think these should be, these should be in every triathlete's um, equipment box. A um, bunch of physio bands, whether that's looped like this one, that's really good for putting around your legs and working on your glutes, um, or these kind of just straight bands that you can tie to anything. Um, not only for the glutes and lateral strength, but also for the shoulders. If you're new to swimming or you, I don't know, you're upping your mileage or you've had shoulder issues, these are really good for the rotator cuff strength. Um, it's actually working on those smaller muscles. A lot of people think you need to be big and strong for swimming. It's not necessarily the case. Actually working on those smaller, finer muscles is really important for controlling the movement in swimming. Um, and that's where these come in. So really swear by those. Um, we've also got, I think this is the final bit. Um, I've got a couple of swim cords here. A few swim cords actually. That is, that's actually a bungee for swim run. <laughs> um, but it's somehow made it in here. Um, yeah, so we've got a couple of swim cords here that are obviously really relevant for now when we can't swim. Um, a lot of people are using swim cords. So you can attach those around your I don't know, your door handle around the bottom of your stairs, you can attach them around a post outside. And uh, essentially, some of them got paddles on them, like this one. Um, some just have 
just standard loops, but yeah, you can just go through your normal pull action and work on your technique, also your strength. A little bit like overgear training um, on the bike. Um, this one's really high resistance, um, so you can really sort of like feel that movement and work on the strength in that. So yeah. I think that's it with all my indoor training um, setup and equipment I've got lying around my house. Um, I use a lot of it quite regularly. That's why I've got it all here ready to be used. Um, so yeah, I hope that has been interesting. Um, as I've sort of said a few times during this, probably a bit of a surprise how simple it is and basic it is. Um, but it works for me. I've made it work over the years and I'm really happy with that. Um, so I'd love to hear from you guys as well um, about your indoor training setups and what you think of mine. Uh, drop that down in the comments section below and I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If so, give this video a like and don't forget to follow GTN on social media.